Hey everybody, so in today's video, you might have already guessed it by looking at the title and the thumbnail, but we are going to be doing backflips today. Just kidding, no, we are going to be diving into how you can use ChatGPT to generate data from scratch and pull that data into a Google Sheets, clean it up and bring it into Neo4j so you can start exploring that data. Now, at the time of this video's release, it is currently May the 4th. May the Force be with you. Which is also known as Star Wars Day. And I think you know what that means. We are going to be using ChatGPT to start generating some Star Wars data. All right, if you want to follow along, and I highly, highly encourage this, you are going to need three things. You're going to need a free OpenAI account with access to ChatGPT. And a free one is totally fine. You do not need a paid version of ChatGPT at all to get started with this video. And second, you're going to need a graph database through Neo4j Aura. And I'll go ahead and leave a link in the description below where you can get started. And last but not least, you're going to need a Google account so you have access to Google Sheets. And if you don't have Google Sheets or Google, but you have Excel, that'll work as well. Cool, if you have all three already, that's awesome. Let's just get started. So first, we'll want to head over to ChatGPT and prompt it to generate some synthetic data on the main characters of Star Wars, where I could easily copy and paste the information over to Google Sheets. Now, right off the bat, ChatGPT gives us some data with character names, gender, species, homeworld, and their alliance affiliation. Now, that's not enough data, so let's prompt it to give us 30 net new rows of data. Okay, so that's looking good. Let's see if we can generate 30 more new rows of data. All right, perfect. So that nets us about 70 rows-ish of data, and, I'm, and I think I'm good with that to start with. Now, let's scroll up a bit and start copying the full table over to our Google Sheets. And I'm going to do this uh, with the other new sets of data that we asked ChatGPT to create for us as well. Now looking at Google Sheets, that looks pretty good. I think what would be nice to have is another column for the names of the actors that played each of the characters. All right, so let's copy a subset of the first column of character names and ask ChatGPT to generate that corresponding list of actors for us. And now let's repeat this process for the remaining subset of character names. Now, the reason why I do this by collecting a small subset of the data is to make sure that we don't overload ChatGPT with too many rows. Otherwise, it'll decide to take a break and it never completes the task that you prompted it to do. All right, so it looks like it did a pretty decent job. Now that we have all the information gathered in Google Sheets, let's do a bit of light cleanup and remove anything that doesn't belong. Now in an ideal world, we would vet the data, but sorry. Ain't nobody got time for that. All right, so go ahead and export this data set into a CSV file over in the file menu. Now, once you have that exported, head over to Neo4j Aura and I'll link to that in the description below. Now, if you need a refresher on how to register an account and spin up a free graph database instance with AuraDB, I'll drop a link in the description. Once your database is up and running, click the open button to get access to your workspace. Enter your password credentials that you saved securely. Now, once you're connected to your graph database instance, you have access to three tools. Explore, which is Neo4j's graph visualization tool powered by Bloom. Query, a developer-friendly tool for writing Cypher queries against your database. And Import, a code-free and visual way to design your data model, preview, and import the data into Neo4j. Now, from this tab, you can now drag and drop your dataset file in the left frame and the tool will recognize each of the columns and gives you a quick preview of the first row of data associated with each column. Now's the fun part, designing your data model. So let's start by adding a node to the canvas and give it a name like character. Hovering on the edge of that node, we can click and drag to add a connecting node. Let's call this one homeworld. For the relationship arrow from characters to homeworld, let's call that comes from with an underscore in between it. So when you read it, it's basically character comes from homeworld. All right, everyone with me so far? Cool, so we're not done yet. We have to define the property of each node and relationship. Now to do that, click on the character node and select what property definitions you wanna give. And for me, I chose all the available properties for simplicity. For homeworld, I just have homeworld selected from the list and its ID is simply the same. 
You should now see a green check mark beside each of the node and its relationship, noting that you successfully defined them and they are ready for import. But there were also some other interesting characteristics in the data set that may be good to include in the data model. I think a character's gender identification, their associated alliance, and let's not forget about the actors that played each character. So let's go ahead and add those nodes and relationships now. Now we're going to fast forward through this a little bit just to save some time, but you know, you get the idea. All right, awesome. As you can see, we have green check marks on every node and relationship, and now we are ready to import, right? Well, yes, but why not give it a quick preview of your data model to make sure everything was mapped correctly? This will save you the trouble of having to re-import the data if anything went wrong. Sweet, so that looks great. Here, you can see the different colors representing each node in the data model, and you can see a quick glance of how everything is related. So I'm happy with this, so let's go ahead and run the import by clicking the blue button over here. And after a couple seconds, we have the import results showing that everything was imported successfully. And now the next thing to do is to explore the results. And to do that, just click on the Explore Results button on the bottom right corner. And that'll take you over to the Explore tab that we were talking about earlier. Cool. So the first thing that will happen is a small subset of your graph will appear automatically. And you can quickly start exploring the data. You can zoom into the graph to see more details of the nodes. And in this case, there's a lot of relationships pointed at this node that says male. Right away, you can already tell there are a lot of characters that identify as male. So moving over, you can see the next cluster of nodes where some characters do not identify themselves as any gender or none. And right next to that node is another cluster that identifies themselves as female. So to declutter the scene a little bit because it can look a little overwhelming right now, you can select a node and right click it and ask it to remove all the other nodes on the scene just leaving that one. And from there, you can right click the node to expand all the interconnected nodes to get a clear sense of all the character nodes that identify as female. Cool, so let's go ahead and clear the scene. Right click anywhere on the empty scene and select clear scene. Pretty simple. Head over to the search field, and here we can simply type the name of a character that we want to search for, like Han Solo. Hit enter, and their node will appear on the scene. You can interact with the node by expanding it to see what alliance they're affiliated with. And in this case, you can see he's affiliated with the Rebel Alliance. And from the Rebel Alliance, you can expand that to see all the related nodes that claim they are also part of the Rebel Alliance. All right, so let's clear the scene one more time. And let's search for um, Luke Skywalker, maybe. And let's add Leia to the scene as well. Now, let's say we want to find out how both of these characters are interconnected with each other and what the shortest path is between the two. On a Mac, hold down the Command key, and you can select two nodes. Right-click one of the nodes, move to Path, and select Shortest Path. Instantly, you can see based on the data in the database, both Luke and Leia are affiliated with the Rebel Alliance. So that is considered the shortest path between the two. So really, the sky's the limit to what you want to explore. And if you get stuck, you have the simple phrase, show me a graph that you can enter in the search field and a subset of your data set will appear and you can start exploring again. Now, moving on for developers who want to hone their cipher skills. For that, you want to head over to the Query tab where you can write Cypher queries and have a different way to interact with your Neo4j graph database. If you're already familiar with Cypher, you can write your own Cypher queries, or if you're just getting started with Cypher, the left side of the window has nodes and relationships all in one place, so you can click to select which one you want to query, and the Cypher statement will be auto-populated for you to run. And that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it just as much as I enjoyed making it. And I hope you also learned something new. And if you did, please give this video a like and subscribe so that you are notified whenever a new video is released and helps other people to find this video. Now, I know there are many other tools and integrations out there that can easily connect ChatGPT to an Excel document, a Google Sheets, or a Word document, or what have you. However, you will need a paid OpenAI account to link your API key. If you have any feedback or you wanted to explore any other interesting new data sets, let us know in the comments below. And until next time, may the graph be with you.